First, I want to just say welcome to the Parent Power Summit 2022. It's a great way to start, start the year. My name is Nicole Young, and I'm a parent that lives in Santa Cruz County. I'm a parent of two big kids, 18 and 21 years old, so they're not really kids anymore. Um, and I'm also one of the consultants that facilitates an initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or core investments. And this is something that began as a funding model in Santa Cruz County, and it has since grown into really a, a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County. So I'm here today, not only because CORE is co-hosting this event with the Central Coast Early Childhood Advocacy Network, but also because I care deeply about the health and well-being of all children and family in our community and I really believe that making small changes can add up to a big difference. And so by all of us being here today, we're each contributing to positive changes for our own families, as well as for our uh, Tri-County area. And so I just wanna welcome, officially welcome everybody. Uh, my colleague, Nicole Lesson, who's the other core consultant is una unable to be here today but I'm joined by two of our uh, core team members, Stella Lauerman and Gisela Carrasco, who are translating in the chats for us today. And I'm gonna give you a little overview of our agenda. So we are in our welcome and doing a little overview right now. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about just the importance of positive parenting and well-being. January is Positive Parenting Awareness Month. Uh, and so we're really excited to be holding this summit um, at the tail end of, that, of the month. We are gonna spend quite a bit of time today in some breakout groups, both learning and having discussions. And so we'll give you an overview of how those will work. We'll go into those breakout groups for some learning and discussion, and then everybody will come back for some reflections and stories and really talk about how to uh, create a call to action and wh what we can all do after today's summit. So that's how we'll finish up with our call to action and closing. And then um, we've got a couple surveys and questions that we'd all love for you to answer. So stay tuned, stay to the end for that. So I'm going to turn it over now to uh, Nina Alcaraz, who's going to say a few words um, on behalf of the network. Great, thank you so much, Nicole. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Nina Alcaraz. I am a mother of two children, eight, and one who turned uh, another child who turns one in two weeks. Um, I work at First Five Monterey County and work on policy advocacy and communications. I'm so happy to be here to welcome you all on behalf of the Central Coast Early Childhood Advocacy Network and Core Investments. Um, I, I see. So many of your faces, some familiar, some new, um, and I'm really, really happy to see you here. So uh, um, thank you all for joining. Uh, you'll see that um, on the next slide, you'll see uh, all the sponsors that helped make this possible um, throughout the three counties of uh, Santa Cruz, San Benito, and Monterey. Um, so we wanna invite you, there, there's a fair amount of us here in this space together. So we'd like to invite you all to virtually introduce yourself in the chat box. If you could type your name, the county you live in, and then kind of what hats you wear. Um, are you a parent, a grandparent? What do you do that um, helps pay some of your bills? Or what do you do spend a majority of your time during the day? Or what brings you passion? So, um, Let's see, let me tell you a little bit about the network. Um, our mission here at the Central Coast Early Childhood Advocacy Network is to strengthen and advocate for policies and systems that support thriving families. And we do this with the vision of making it all happen so that we have an equitable, joyful, and resilient community that acts collectively so that every child and caregiver thrives and reaches their full potential. We have over 400 members, and if you aren't a member, I hope that you will join and sign up as a member. Um, but collectively, we represent over 94,000 children uh, ages zero to eight in the three counties that we mentioned. So a couple years ago, when we were all able to meet in person, if we can remember the, those days, 
we were able to identify four key policy priorities that you see on the slides there. One of them being strong families, another health and well being, quality early care and learning, and effective and sustainable systems. We think that if we push forward policies within these four areas, that we'll be able to see that, that joyful and resilient community that we envision. Uh, so every year we examine kind of the bills that are coming forward that have been presented at the state level. And, but we advocate for the ones that really mean something within our communities. And we do that by listening to what you want. And so we look forward for your impact to, um, your input, I'm sorry, to keep refining those long-term and short-term policy priorities. So please keep an eye out because we will be sending out a policy priority survey to everybody uh, in the next coming month or two afterwards. Um, we're gonna see the introduction of bills at the state level. And so that will be able to help kind of narrow down what we really need to be pushing for within our counties. Um, and on that note, um, we keep on over the past couple of years, we keep seeing our membership grow. We keep seeing the work that we want to do grow. So we've been able to bring on a new staff member who I'd like to introduce to you today. So we're very excited to welcome and introduce Erica Ariola um, as the new community organizer for the Central Coast Early Childhood Advocacy Network. She is a passionate and dedicated advocate with years of experience working closely with the community. She's been with us for about almost two months now and she's already made such a big impact. Um, so I'd like to invite her to say and share a few words. Gracias, Nina. Buenas tardes a todas y a todos. Mi nombre es Erika Reola. Como mi, Nina lo ha mencionado, yo soy la organizadora de la comunidad de aquí del Network. Estoy muy emocionada de saber que estoy aquí con pura gente luchona que quiere lo mejor para sus hijos. Es por eso que les quiero compartir un poquito de mí. Bueno, pues este, yo trabajé con las mamás de Salinas Abogan, tiempecito atrás, y también trabajé como asistente de investigaciones en la comunidad durante varios proyectos durante mi etapa en la universidad. El día de hoy decidí tomar esta posición como organizadora comunitaria simplemente porque yo pienso que como padres, como comunidad, como defensores, nosotros tenemos el poder de hacer el cambio mediante nuestras historias y mediante expresar nuestras necesidades a las personas que están encargadas de un sistema político o que están encargadas de un, de un distrito escolar o que están encargadas de una posición de poder. Es por eso que mi trabajo el día de hoy más que nada es conectar con cada una de las personas aquí presentes que quiera continuar a unirse a la lucha y que quiera expresar sus necesidades. Bueno, pues creo que es todo y pues el último recordatorio que tengo por ahora este que va a haber una encuesta en inglés y en español para que todos ustedes participantes por favor la lean y la submitan. La pueden entregar y de esa manera nosotros sabemos qué funcionó en este submit y qué es lo que no funcionó y cómo podemos mejorar. Hey, Erica, Erica, can I interrupt for just a second? I think we need to make sure that our interpreter is on the right channel. I'd say, Erica, why don't you continue with what you were saying? And then maybe what we can do is um, also have a, a brief kind of summary of what you were saying in English, if that's all right. Okay. So start from the beginning, Nina? No, I would say can finish off with what your thoughts were. That's cool. Okay. Muy bien. Pues uh, mil disculpas por ese detallito que acaba de suceder. Uh, solamente les estaba comentando que mi nombre es Erika Reola. Soy la nueva organizadora de aquí del Network. Mi trabajo es más que nada ser la voz para ustedes y trabajar junto con ustedes el día de hoy y siempre para poner a abogar por nuestros niños y nuestras familias de los condados de Santa Cruz, San Benito y de Monterrey. Y pues por último, nada más recordarles muy rapidito que al final de todo este evento grande vamos a estar poniendo en el chat una encuesta que va a ser importantísima que ustedes como participantes llenen, ya que es importante para nosotros saber si este evento fue de su agrado y qué comentarios tienen para nosotros sin probarlo en la siguiente ocasión. Gracias.
And then Erica, do you want to maybe do like just a brief recap in English of, of what you said when you introduced yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. This is Erica Reola. I am the new community organizer for the CCA. And I'm here um, as part also of Mamas de Salinas Abogan. I work with them too, being a volunteer. And I am passionate to have this position because I'm here to help you shape your knowledge and shape your needs, but mostly to help you become your own voice for your own children and families so you can advocate for them. I am very happy to be here. I look forward this day and always to connect with you and to be able to make a change. I, as of now, I would like just to remind you that there is a small survey going on around at the end of this big event for you to tell us how we did, what did you like, what did you not like, and how can we prove it for next time? Thank you. Thanks, Erica. And again, welcome. And I hope you can see and feel the warm welcome you're getting uh, from others in the chat. Okay, we're gonna keep going. We're also still trying to troubleshoot the interpretation, so <laughs> bear with us. Um, and Stella and I are gonna say a few words about Positive Parenting Awareness Month. Uh, we are both also part of the team that coordinates the Triple P Positive Parenting Program for First Five Santa Cruz County. Uh, and so January is, like I said, Positive yo vamos a decir unas cuantas palabras. Enero es el mes de ese empoderamiento de, de padres y otros condados siguieron también. Offer Triple P, as well as other parenting and family support programs. And really we're, we're united in this passion and this vision for supporting all families uh, in all of our communities. And so it's really grown into a statewide movement. Uh, and we're really excited to be ending the month with today's summit. And so what this means is that every year we dedicate January to recognizing and celebrating parents and caregivers and promoting family well-being. Uh, because we know that raising children and teens is the best we'll ever have. Um, and we also know that positive parenting and nurturing relationships lay the groundwork for lifelong health happiness and well-being, not only for our children today, but for future generations. Um, and so Stella's going to tell you a little bit more now in Spanish about our local and statewide activities. Este fue el, el décimo año de que la mesa, en que la mesa de supervisores del condado de Santi Santa Cruz publicó una proclamación reco reconociendo enero como el mes de concientización de la crianza positiva y es el tercer año que la legislatura de California ha hecho lo mismo para el estado. De hecho, la semana pasada la asamblea aprobó la resolución en un voto unánimo con 64 asambleístas democráticos y republicanos que firmaron como coautores y ahora ha pasado al Senado del Estado para el voto. Es más, representantes de agencias y defensores padres en muchos condados en todo el, el estado se reunieron con legislatores estatales eh, anteriormente este mes y en nuestras reuniones compartimos ejemplos de los desafíos que muchas familias es, están experimentando debido al COVID, los incendios forestales y el racismo y la manera en que la pandemia que continúa está afectando la salud mental de padres y niños. Y en nuestra llamada a la acción, le animamos a los legisladores a aprobar la resolución del mes de concientización de crianza positiva y les pedimos apoyo continuo y fondos para los programas de crianza positiva y de bienestar familiar. Estas uh, visitas legislativas fueron muy exitosas y es una oportunidad importante para seguir fomentando nuestras relaciones con los oficiales electos. Es claro que ellos valoran nuestro rol como padres y cuidadores y que aprecian nuestra colaboración como defensores y líderes comunitarios. 
Y ahora le voy a dar la palabra a Diana para que ella pueda compartir algunos breves comentarios sobre padres y resiliencia. Buenas tardes. Como ya lo dijeron, mi nombre es Diana Valadez. Uh, so, soy una madre activa de con una carrera y fui madre uh, líder por cuatro años y ahora soy una promotora de la salud y doy gracias primero por permitir que los padres como yo podamos llevar a cabo este tipo de eventos ya que como padres a veces tenemos, tenemos otras ocupaciones y no nos permite poder llegar a estos lugares. Quiero hablar, como ya dijo Estela, del tema de que todo el mundo lo experimentamos y ese es el estrés. Todos escuchamos la palabra estrés y nos asustamos de una o de alguna forma, pero tomemos en cuenta que hay diferentes tipos de estrés, tales como el positivo, que es cuando tenemos una competencia, una sorpresa, un examen, una cita, incluso una cita romántica también. Todo eso nos causa nerviosismo, pero es un estrés bueno, se podría decir. Otro tipo de estrés es el tolerable. Este tipo es es cuando pasamos algo en nuestro vecindario, un desastre natural, incluso una carta de migración, es algo que aún podemos controlar. Y el estrés... Yeah, todo... Diana, disculpe. Um, can we pause for a moment? I think we, we need to try to figure out this interpretation. And I'm thinking it might be easiest if I just re reset it and um, try to get Evelia and Maricela back on the right channels. Okay, so Evelia, you're gonna be interpreting from Spanish to English, right? And Maricela, English to Spanish. Okay. I'm going to restart it. Everybody needs to select their language channel again. Okay, and so, um, Avelia, we can't we can't hear you at all. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, we can't hear you at all, Evelia. I'm not. I'm wondering sure if happening. you could maybe try leaving the meeting and then coming back in, if that might help. So, Maricela, in the in the meantime, can you translate in both languages and just toggle back and forth? Okay. Diana, I'm I'm so sorry <laughs> to have to interrupt you in the middle. Um. Do you mind, I'll bring your slide back up again. Can you start, can you do your piece again? So we can have the interpretation and then see your slide the whole time. Okay. So I'm starting now? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, buenas tardes. Good afternoon to all of you. My name is Diana Valadez from Cradle to Career. I've been a parent leader for four years and now I advocate for the well-being of our children. I am very thankful for these type of events. As parents, we are always very busy and we probably don't imagine being part of this. I want to start talking about a theme that we all go through, which is stress. We've all heard the word stress. And yes, it's intimidating and it's overwhelming. But when we take into account the different types of stress, there's positive stress. That's when we're probably challenged or we probably have a, a test or a surprise or a date. And we probably feel somewhat nervous, but it's a positive and good positive stress. And then we have the tolerable stress when something in our neighborhood is going on or a natural disaster or maybe a letter from INS, something that we are able to control. Now there's toxic stress when we feel very overwhelmed thinking that 
All of this is out of our control and we cannot solve, for example, the physical, sexual abuse, domestic violence, or be, being without a home, also physical negligence, just to mention a few. We acknowledge, and when we think about the two years, these past two years that we've all lived, our stress levels have certainly grown lack of maybe stability, lack of financial stability, maybe we lost our, our employment, the lack of resources, but something that's very important and something that you probably have not realized is that we have cultivated resilience. We are, we've been strong and we are stronger now. We are in a better place to now see the different challenges, not in a negative note, but we have overcome them and we continue to overcome through our skills, through our problem solving. And the most important thing is that we try to solve all of this with our heart. We're just human beings and we go through adversity, but this at the same time, has been a motivation to keep advocating for family and community well-being. All families go to stress, go through stress and good and bad times, but in spite of that, we continue going. And also our educators in our community, we've seen a resilience, a generosity of support, and just an amazing resilience. Today, there are more parents that are willing to advocate for their families and their children and connect with their representatives so that as a community, we commit to continue showing this resilience, being strong, supporting each other, knowing that we're not alone. And many organizations truly and sincerely are committed to the well-being of our families or, and children. And they use their vision as a lens, acknowledging not only the obstacles, but also to cultivate better experiences for our children and their families. Each and every one of us must have our kit full of tools. Yes, our different arms against stress. With, with self-care, and also quality sleep, a good and balanced nutrition, physical activity, a mental health care, experiencing the nature and mindfulness practices, and above all, that we continue showing each other love and care for each other, which is such an essential part as humans. Each and every one of you have shown an amazing resilience and a unique leadership. If we continue learning from one another and supporting one another, we will overcome and we will find the light at the end of the tunnel. Let us keep submerging ourselves in workshops like this. This is the key to our success, to really reaching our goals and vision. Please, encouragement. Yes, we must feel very encouraged families. We are resilient are not only in body, in spirit, but in soul and heart. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope that these words have resonated with you. Just as a final statement, I would like to share with all of you a message of hope that I shared with, with some people at the, at the beginning of the pandemic. I really didn't think I was that resilient, but now I'm a living testament of resilience. And this is my message of hope to all of you. So this message is with the intention that we all feel at ease and that we not let go of hope, even though our sadness has maybe grown and we feel more overwhelmed and we feel this more stress and maybe sometimes hopeless, maybe this is a time to get to know yourself better. Maybe you, had, you didn't know how strong and resilient you were. You're a great mom, a great neighbor, a great sister, a great daughter. You're a human 
And every time you stumble and fall, you know, these falls and stumbles just make us stronger because we will get up and we will continue to fight for our own, for our family. We must be okay with feeling vulnerable and we cannot be conquered. We are one for all and all for one. Yes, please know that you are not alone. We are all going through the same things, but we will overcome adversity and we will overcome these battles. Very soon in the near future, we will look back and we will see everything that we've accomplished. We will value our life. We will value those that we love and our earth and the land where we live. We must have faith. We must have hope. Never lose hope or faith. We are not ready to give up and we will not give up. So please get up, smile, look at your surroundings and you will see that everything that surrounds you is beautiful, just beautiful. And if we all see the, our life with that lens, then things will become beautiful. My best wishes and best desires to all of you and your loved ones and your family. And remember, when there's faith, there's always hope. Thank you. And then I will now ask for Erika to continue. Thank you, Erika, for such a powerful message. We all need hope. So I think now, as I had mentioned at the beginning, this webinar will have two breakout sessions, the Community Resilience, resilience and Family Wellbeing, and then Culture and Belonging is the second breakout session. What we are trying to do here is to invite all of you, all of the participants and attendees to take a moment to envision life in the near future. What am I talking about? Well, we will be working, we will be learning on the collaboration work that has already going on within the different community groups. We will be also reflecting about the different values in our life and how the connections that we have made, taking into account our culture, is something real that's happening in our communities. Every one of these, every one of these values will direct us so that we can hit it on the nail and so we can create a change and impact. Thank you very much. All right, before everybody moves off into their breakout sessions, we also wanna talk about um, how there's so much passion and excitement around advocacy in this space. And part of our role as the Central Coast Early Childhood Advocacy Network is connect you all to opportunities where you can and stretch those new skills and knowledge that you gather in today's workshop. And so, you know, we look at advocacy as harnessing that passion, that love, those dreams that you have for your children, for your neighbors, for your friends, and for your family, and then collecting, creating this collective power and this message for our community to bring up to our state representatives. Um, so after you return from your breakout groups, we're going to help synthesize and, and, and gather Mr. Mendoza is my name. What I was able to get from the group is that everyone wants to improve. We all want to improve. We have a big heart and we want to be able to help our community and that we are able to understand things a little bit different. But, but how do I say this? But there's solutions. 
and seeking these solutions is key. Going to our communities, looking for programs, uh, looking for resources that are available to us that are important for our families to be able to be there more with them, to be able to educate them more. When one other thing that is important for the group is to take care of our health, our physical health, to be able to rest well, eat well, What else can I say? The importance of recognizing our emotions, that there's hardships, hardships that we all have in life, but there's uh, solutions for those struggles and there's help out there. That's what I was able to get from our group, that there's a lot of heart, a lot of will to be want to help not only to the community, but for ourselves as well, for the future, for generation after generations in the future. Thank you. Uh, Adam, Adam, thank you very much. Yes, that is correct. That's what we try to see, that there are solutions as long as we want to unite and support each other like a big family, like Lilia commented earlier on her group. So that's what we are. Is there somebody else that wants to participate? I want to participate. The Laida Flores and I participated. We talked about stress. As the gentleman just said, that we have a big heart, all of us, and we want to help our community also. Unfortunately, or unfortunately, sometimes there are people that don't know that there's these types of shops. They don't know how to join these types of educational settings to let the neighbor know, the friend, the comadre, to everyone that there's um, solutions. It could be a small problem or it could be a big problem, but there's shops where you can learn. Oh, uh, this is happening. Uh, I could get help here. What about the pandemic stress? And we continue to have this stress with the pandemic. Some say it could be, you could be positive or negative. It just depends if for some people, Stress is going to move you to move forward uh, or it can make you fall and feel sorry for yourself. But if you have a friend, a neighbor, you know what, this is what's happening. Why don't you come with us? It's going to be via Zoom. There's a lot of people that don't know that resources are available. The schools help a lot. There's lots of ways of helping each other and communicate with each other. So this is all mixed stress. Everything mixes within our community. But if we hold our hands virtually, we can move forward and be a better community. And as the gentleman said, why would we take a child that did bad from school why expel him for five, six days? We need to know what is the root of this situation, this issue. Why is he going through this? Why did he do that? Sadly, the schools, what do they do? They expel the child. So as parents, we need advocacy. I need you to help me find a solution for my children. There are a lot of kids that are calling attention, but sadly, we don't know the why. And there's adults that have bad thoughts that want to hurt our kids and we don't pay attention. Well, that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Aneda, for sharing that. Yes, there's always a reason as to why our kids do the things they do. Sometimes they need extra support to be able to move forward to help them. And us parents need to learn how to deal with that, how to educate ourselves and educate our kids regarding their conduct or try to change why this is happening or if the school has to do something and how participating as parents could make the difference. So now Nora can speak. Nora, Nora can speak. <laughs> oh, uh, she, I had a hard time unmuting, sorry. I was in a small group where Julio was. First of all, we learned a lot 
we learn how to differentiate the different levels of stress, how to overcome them. I am not going to repeat what has been said by the previous person, but really uh, personal care is important to be comfortable. It helps a lot. Mainly, what I liked most of this shop is that we are here for the same cause, for our kids to improve and to ask uh, the big voices that there's some changes to of improvement that we need in the schools to improve our kids, our families, our communities. And to know that we are resilient and that we are able to manage any type of stress that comes our way. And we are united and that we have a great heart and that our voice be heard and that we be that uh, little bit of sand to make a big change in each one of our communities because each community has its different issues, needs, but as Adam said and the previous person said, there are organizations that can give us the support and to know where they are and how to ask for them. Because on occasions, it's the language that stops us. Everything's in English. And so we don't want to ask for anything. We don't want to ask for help or anything. So it is really good. Uh, to have these types of trainings. I hope you continue to invite us. Thank you. Thank you, Nora, for, for sharing. Yes, the language is sometimes a barrier. That's why we need to advocate and use our culture to know that the people need to be inclusive. Marie Carmen, uh, it's your turn. And I think you have a very short um, time left because there's a survey to be filled out. So we tried the topic of culture, how our culture helps us heal us and help our community and how we use our culture to advocate for our kids. What was shared a little bit is that through movement about our culture to bring back bilingual education, make it a right and to get all that movement with that within the community as well as the legislative level through culture and that way we can advocate and be able to ask for the resources that our families need. Thank you. Thank you, Marilu. Thank you very much. Of course. Yes, we need to empower ourselves. Nicole, do you know anything about the survey? Nicole, do you know anything about the survey? I think the survey is, um, there's a link that we'll, we'll post at the end. And so it's something that, that everyone can fill out afterwards. But we just wanted to mention it during today's summit so that everyone knows to keep an eye out for it. Um, Erica and Maria Carmen, do you wanna um, try doing the storytelling questions? Is that is that something you want to do now? Because we can bring up the slides again, if you're ready to guide, guide a couple people through that discussion. Of course, Nicole, if you want to start with that part of the voluntary, yeah, we could do this. I just wanted to know about the uh, survey. So this is the area of the volunteer. We're going to give you a little taste of what it is to advocate for your kids and your families. So more than anything to say, who are they? What is the story? And what are you asking for? Is there a volunteer that wants to participate? I think Mari, Maritrinia was going to participate. Maritrini. Right here, Erica. Thank you very much, Maritrini. So we're going to start. Tell us a little bit about your story. Tell us, who are you? 
Good evening to everyone. So my name is Barry Long, Maria Trinidad Sanchez Sandoval. But Maritrini is my artistic name or artist name. So first to sixth grade in Mexico, I am a mother of six, five women and one boy. Uh, I take care of infants in an early education, also older kids. I am part of uh, the Committee of Padres Unidos and Mamas Abogan. And for a number of years, my oldest is 26. Uh, but ever since she was a Head Start, I was always a volunteer in my kids' rooms in schools as president or vice president. But I've always participated. I've always been involved. But one of the most important things in my life the initial stage in early education or the early years. That's one of the needs that I see that is one of the biggest needs that we can, as parents, support the kids, the, the kids in their early education. That's part of my story. This, I'm also a grandmother. I have two grand children, girls, or both of them are five years, and one of them is one year. One of them is a boy and a girl, and one that's one year. So all these motivated me to get into early child education. And during the pandemic, I wrote a book, The Importance of Early Child Learning. So that's part of my story, part of my life. I continue to work with kids. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Maritrini. Before you go, I'm going to ask Nicole to change the slide. Muy bien, Maritrini. Pues no se vaya. Very good, Maritrini. We are not done yet. So you've told us that you're Maritrini Sanchez, that you advocate strongly for early child education. And now what I want to know is specifically, what is a need that you feel that is needed, that needs to get changed or that we need to know about? For me personally, and I think for many, for parents, the biggest need is cognitive early child education is not being taken as a need. It's being seen as an opportunity for the kids and the kids need to have the privilege to go to this place and get an education because that's where early education develop their abilities, their cognitive abilities, physical abilities, language abilities, especially social emotional abilities. One of the biggest needs is that there be centers for the care of uh, these children to have this early child education. What I see is that when the mother or father find try to go and try to a uh, place, they have to qualify. They're only eligible if they have these qualifications. And many of our kids lose out on that. In its early education, the first three years of life, the most important ones in the ch child's life. So I do see a big need that there'd be more centers for infant caring because that's where they develop to continue to kinder or further their education or even university level. Because statistics show that when a child starts uh, early, to develop the four stages. When this child goes into a kinder, he is very prepared. Earlier um, at the beginning, we talked about positive discipline, the importance of early education. So it is very important. I do see a big need that we get centers, that, um, that we get the resources for these centers so that these children uh, from zero to three can participate. Very good, Maritrini. We will continue with the next question. Nicole puede cambiar slide, gracias. Okay. 
Thank you, Nicole. The next question is, who should create more centers for children zero to three? And who uh, should give more access so that their kids can qualify? Who do you, would you ask to make that change? Uh, first of all, the legislators all those that make up the board of supervisors or uh, principals in schools, there's a big group. I would go to them, legislators or the education department of the state of California, that they make this available for these kids or the superintendent of each city or the representative in each city. And when we get the money for LCAP, that this be distributed to infant centers. Apparently, um, more jails are being built than schools. We want paths, secure paths for our kids. We don't want them to walk to the jail. They want him, we want them to walk to the university. Perfect, Maritrina. Everything you've just shared, now you need to put it in a small sentence. My name is Maritrina, my need is this, and these are the people that I want to ask so that they put it to action. My name is Maritrina Sanchez, and one of the biggest needs, one of the biggest needs it, it, is it there's uh, support for early child education? I would go to the legislators and with the state of California to open centers um, for early child education. Thank you very much, Maritrini. That's just a little preview of what advocacy is. Now I would give the microphone to Mari Carmen to ask for another volunteer, but we need to be quick because time is running out. Mari Carmen. Oh, yes, Erica. I think my internet is messing up. I don't know if I lost internet service. So please, something happened here. So introduce me again. So yes, so with you, Mari Carmen, we need one more volunteer that can say in one minute, say in one sentence, what is your story, who you are, and what are you asking for? So we leave you the microphone. So you've introduced me. We have a minute. <clears throat> Hopefully it's someone. I don't want to steal the time. Who is the one that can take advantage? I want to take advantage of it. Somebody just volunteer if I can. Okay, Norma, go for it. My name is Norma Porto. I am a mother, two kids, and one grandchild, a girl, and I'm also an educator of early child education. I am working for MCOE uh, as a supervisor. I'm also he part here participating, um, being part of, as a member of the community. I'm advocating for our children in early education. The, the motive for participating in this, being here with you, is to collaborate with each one of you to make change in our community. Our kids, our families need it. And what I need is uh, to speak to the specific persons that is my our governor that they give us uh, the funds immediately so that they go directly to our families so that they have that benefit that these benefits be applied for early child education quality education. The second one is that we have more schools and that all of our children have the rights to be registered, to be able to go to a school. Because as Trini mentioned, a lot of kids go, but for some reason they don't qualify because of the income. 
So let's eliminate all these obstacles about why we can't uh, register a child. Education should be for every child that exists without race, color. That is my motive to be here with you, to belong for Ma Mamata Salinas Abogan. And I invite all of you to continue to fight harder we can't continue to go slowly, step by step. We have to push. There are big things coming and these big things are coming soon. Thank you so much. I'm very proud to be here and be a collaborative person. We had a good training, so now uh, to America. Thank you, Mari Carmen, for that message so powerful to continue to fight strongly without dropping the ball. Right now, I would like that you see the chat. We place the chat, the survey. This is very important that you fill out the survey at the end. I myself will continue. Um, to try to reach you guys to make sure you do the survey so that you give us your comments so you could tell us how these trainings could go forward in the future to help the parents and let us know if you want to continue supporting us in this advocacy and what you want to learn in regards about how we, we can make change. So now, David Brody, thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, we're almost done tonight. It, I'm David Hola Brody. Hola a todos. I'm David Brody. I'm the executive director of First Five Santa Cruz County, one of the sponsoring organizations of today's event. Um, Yo soy uno de los I just want to acknowledge everyone for participating. Uh, by the way, I'm hearing the Spanish translation on the English channel. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's something that can be fixed. You need to switch the language channel. Thanks. Um, but anyways, um, I, I just wanted to say briefly that uh, how excited I am, uh, as we all are, and how we're looking forward to um, working with all of you to build on the knowledge, the skills, the conversation, and really, like has been stressed today, the relationships that we're developing to uh, do exactly what we just were talking about and what clearly everyone is so excited about, advocating for our kids and our families um, on the Central Coast. So, you know, my role in today's meeting was to do a call to action. I really don't think a call to action is necessary. This group is fired up and ready to go. And we are hearing that. And it is so gratifying to hear it and so encouraging. Um, and just, it makes me swell with pride, honestly, in, in the vibrancy and resilience of our community. But I will highlight a couple of things that um, are opportunities moving forward. Um, uh, one is something that many of you may have heard of. There is a very large new initiative in California called the Children and Youth Behavioral and Health Initiative. It's a over $4 billion multi-year um, effort to really rebuild our uh, behavioral health, mental health system of care for children and youth in California um, with the hope of really turning it into something uh, much more upstream focused uh, much more focused on the whole ecosystem, you know, the environment that our kids are, are living in from, from the family unit to the schools, to the cities and towns, to our state and everything they experience, and really to create, frankly, just a more compassionate and effective um, behavioral health care system. And so our commitment to you today is, is um, we are going to take what we heard today, we're going to take what came out of the focus groups, what I mean, out of the, the breakout groups, what came out of the um, conversation and discussion that we just had, and we're going to deliver those messages directly to the leadership of that initiative, both because we think it's so important that they hear our voices, your voices here on the Central Coast, expressing what we all know we need for kids in our community and really what we need for kids in the entire state. Um, but also in the longer term to build a relationship with the leadership and the implementers of that initiative so that it's not just a one-time event, but they see us as a place to turn to really understand what the community needs and what the community's strengths are and how we can work together in the interests of, our, of all of our kids. Um, so that's our commitment to you, that we're going to share these messages today and get that to, the, to that initiative. Um, 
In addition, as many of you are probably aware, every year now for a few years, the Central Coast Early Childhood Advocacy Network has hosted legislative sessions. So we heard people saying, what do you do? Absolutely right. You go to your legislatures, you get them to allocate funds, you get them to prioritize. Budgets are just just really priorities that people establish for what matters in our state and our community. And so we're gonna have another round of legislative visits in the spring. And we very strongly encourage you to stay connected to this network and keep hold of that passion that you're feeling tonight uh, and join us for those legislative visits. We'll be coordinating and helping facilitate so you can get in front of our assembly members, in front of our state senators uh, and, and advocate for exactly what you're talking about this evening. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention quickly, uh, some of you might recall, uh, we've done this before, there will be, uh, there's an upcoming parent and policy cohort. So we'll be forming a co cohort of parents and community members to really help facilitate additional learning growth and just resilience and strength in your capacity to advocate on these issues, on public policy issues. And so if you wanna learn more about that and you wanna express interest, uh, just do what we've already been asked, which is complete that survey that Eric has really been emphasizing. That, that's the key right there. Just please complete the survey at the end of this. Um, that helps us understand uh, how you felt about how things went tonight. And again, also helps us stay connected um, if you're interested in these different opportunities moving forward. Um, so I think that's it. And I believe I was originally going to turn it back to Erica, but I think she's talked about the survey. Erica, do you have more to share before we close out? Thank you, David. Thank you so much for reinforcing the idea that you're going to be here with us when we have legislative meetings and future events. I have nothing else to say but appreciate everyone because there's going to be a picture. Everybody stay oh, because there's right. going to be a picture and, and you're going to have to fill out the survey. So I'm going to ask that you fill out the survey, the poll, and be ready with your camera so that we are able to take the picture. Thank you very much. Continue to be connected. As you know, I'm here to help you. I am new, but I'm going to put forward a lot of strength so that I could help you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Erica. Sorry, I got so excited. I forgot about my job of getting everybody to get on the picture. So yeah, anybody who can or willing, please share your Everyone camera is. and let's have big smiles. Uh, and uh, I believe, well, at least a couple people are definitely gonna be taking screenshots. So let's maybe do a count of three. One, two, three. All right, Sage, I think you were doing it. Did we get it? Yes, thank you, everyone. Awesome. We're I think that closes us out, yes? All right. All right, thank you guys. Pronto. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Gracias. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Gracias, gracias a todas y a todos.